A very good morning to my dear children of class 6 and I am happy to welcome you all to today's botany class. So what are we going to learn today? Today's topic will be a new lesson that is chapter 8 and the name of the lesson is Habitats and Adaptations. So what is the name of the lesson? Habitats and Adaptations. So let's get started. What is habitat? In this picture you can see fishes right so the habitat of this fish is water I say what does it mean habitat is the place where an organism lives for this in the case of fishes the habitat is water so the habitat for every organism in this world varies right so how can you define a habitat a habitat is a natural environment say for example you cannot call your house since you live in your house you cannot call house as your habitat because it is man-made right we only build the house it is not natural so habitat is a natural environment is water natural or artificial mostly it is natural right of course we do have fish tanks in our house and we grow fishes right that is not a natural environment habitat is either a pond or a lake or a river these are all natural habitats no so a habitat you can address something as a habitat only when it is in the natural environment of an any organism or species species means same kind of animal cat is a species dogs are a particular separate species human beings that is homo sapiens you have studied no it is a different species so of any organism or species the habitat can be and it will be the place where it lives for fish this is the habitat and then it will be the place where it multiplies only in that habitat the organism or the species will multiply fishes will not go to some other place and multiply of course in some cases it does but mostly it will multiply in the same place where it lives usually and it thrives naturally it continues living naturally not in an artificial condition it will be always a natural environment clear that is what we can address it as habitat if it is going to be artificially a fish tank cannot be addressed as a habitat it should be a natural place so how can you define a habitat a habitat is a natural environment of any organism where it will live as well as it will multiply and it thrives it continue to live for many years or until its death it will continue to live so you need to memorize this definition as like other definitions please memorize this definition and then what is the need for habitat in a habitat what all an organism does it the, it the habitat will act like a shelter what is shelter that habitat will be the house for the organism in the case of again uh, this fish which is the house this pond is the house for the fishes so habitats provide shelter habitats provide food whatever food the fishes are going to eat will be present in the same habitat in this place only it can find its feed it need not travel to some other place for eating alone so it will be the place where it lives as well as it will get food from the same habitat and water in the case of fishes it is okay this is a uh, aquatic habitat or a water habitat so water is already available say for example uh, let it be a forest it will be the habitat for animals no in that case the forest itself will provide water for the animals so the basic uh, requirements like water air will already present in, be present in that habitat clear and also it will be the place the habitat will be the place to raise its young ones it will multiply in the same place as well as the young ones will also grow in the same habitat clear so why you the and any organism will need habitat either for shelter for its food water and air that is the basic requirements all will be obtained from the same habitat and also it will be the place where the next generation also will be raised so these are some requirements for 
habitats then what are the examples for habitats one list is given in your book i'll just list it down you know about that pond habitat it can be lake habitat forest habitat grassland habitat desert or mountain can also be a habitat and polar region the ice cold region can also be a habitat for example polar bears all live in the polar region no so even extreme conditions like mountains deserts polar regions even that can be a habitat and there the bear the polar bear is self sufficient no it eats it has shelter everything it accomplishes in the same habitat it doesn't go out for its food or shelter right so every habitat will have all the requirements of the organism so these are the examples of habitats listed in your text just uh, learn this also then there is one more definition for adaptation in your book what is this word adaptation i'll give you a example before explaining the definition say for example you're going to a cold place okay for either for a, a tour or something you're going for a to a cold place okay so usually we have a normal temperature here and when you go to a very cold place what you will be uh, tempted to do you will have the urge to wear the jackets because obviously you'll be feeling so cold no so you may wear caps or jackets to make yourself warm to make your body warm as well as what all you do you uh, drink uh, hot coffee or tea frequently no to keep yourself to feel good or to keep yourself warm you also take in hot fluids right so what are you doing there in order to survive in that particular environment you adapt yourself you do something so that you feel normal and comfortable that is called adaptations to a new environment you stay comfortable by doing something which can make you keep normal so that is one example so you can define habitat as a change in physical feature what physical feature means what you can see externally here in the case the jacket is the physical feature you are adding something extra to your body so that you feel comfortable this is a adaptation you are changing or adapting yourself to survive in a uh, extreme condition or a condition which is not normal you change your character you may not usually drink uh, so much of coffee or tea but when you go to a new place you will change your character so that you feel comfortable in that place so that is change in your behavior or character of any species not only human beings it can even be animals which will undergo adaptation about this only we are going to learn in the next few slides okay all the species can undergo adaptation not only human beings this allows to survive successfully why all these adaptations are made so that you can survive you can live comfortably or successfully clear so what is the definition of adaptation a change in the physical feature or the character or the behavior of any species so that it can survive successfully is called as adaptation clear then one example uh, given in your textbook is polar bear this is a polar bear it survives in cold climate no as i told you in the introduction part itself polar bear habitat is polar region it doesn't go out for its food or shelter it just survives in the same place how it survives in the same place when it is too cold and it is full of ice or snow how does this bear alone we cannot survive there usually no usually you cannot find human beings there mostly whereas polar bear how it survives because its body has special adaptations okay what are what are those adaptations there are two adaptations in a polar bear the first one is a thick layer of fat is present below their skin below the skin no below the surface of the skin polar bear has a very thick layer of fat usually you know um, the general nature of human beings is um fat people no will not uh, feel cold easily whereas uh, uh, thin people no um, 
even if it is a little cold outside they feel so cold because of less fat in the body whereas fat people people who are stout no they will have more fat usually so that they don't feel cold even when the temperature is cold outside similarly this polar bear also has a thick layer of fat so it does not feel cold and then the thick white fur fur is the hair you can see you know that is called the fur and also the presence of thick fur will keep the animal feel warm okay so how these are all natural adaptations it is not artificially made like just how human beings wear jacket all it cannot wear something right it is not it is made that way it is created that way that it has two adaptations naturally what are those two adaptations fat layer thick layer of fat and also some hair a very thick usually other animals also have a fur or the hair around their body on the surface of their body but this hair is very thick you can see you know it is very thick so that the animal feels warm clear yeah. so this is the example of adaptation given in your textbook okay generally habitats can be of two categories they can be of two types the first one is called aquatic habitat and the second one is called terrestrial habitat what is aquatic aquatic means water and terrestrial means land so habitats can either be on land or it can be in water some examples of both these types of habitats are given for aquatic habitats you can give examples as seas oceans ponds and lakes also rivers and in terrestrial habitats forests mountains deserts human settlements and the crop fields all come under terrestrial habitats clear so first we are going to learn about aquatic habitats what is the topic for today adaptations right so we are going to learn what are the adaptations present in aquatic habitats the adaptations can be in aquatic plants or in aquatic animals what are aquatic plants whichever plants live in the water inside the water they are called as aquatic plants and whatever animals live inside the water they are called as aquatic animals so this class is going to be about adaptations in aquatic plants because you know plants they generally live on the land right they don't live the general nature of plants is to live on land but only some plants have the ability to live under the water so definitely these plants must have something special some adaptations in them so that they can live inside the water so what are those adaptations only you are going to learn in today's class so the uh, class that is the adaptations in aquatic plants generally aquatic plants are called by the word hydrophytes hydrophytes hydro means water and phyte means loving phyte it is not f i g h t that is something the opposite for uh, uh, this fight this fight means the likeness or loving so water loving plants plants which love to live in water they are called as hydrophytes okay so these hydrophytes or aquatic plants may be of three types called floating plants fixed plants and under water plants what are the three types of aquatic plants all these plants have certain special adaptations so that they can live in water they have something different from the normal plants which are on the land that's why they have the ability or capacity to live under the water so what are the three varieties floating plants fixed plants and under water plants so we we'll learn about these three one by one so first is about floating plants so as the term suggest when you read itself you can understand now what are floating plants they float on the surface of the water floating plants float on the surface of the water you can see the plants from outside on the water surface you can see them examples given are hyacinth and duckweed see this plant no 
this is even common in Kanyakumari district you must have seen on the surface of uh, um, certain lakes all you can see it is called water hyacinth it has a lavender color flower and you can see the leaves on the surface so it is actually a weed weed means it is a waste plant mostly um, on a dirty uh, pond all or a lake you can find this fully grown so it is called water hyacinth that is an example and also duckweed this is duckweed this is also present on the surface it covers the entire surface of the lake or the pond okay what are hyacinth and duckweed what are the adaptations what they have special in them so that they can live on the surface of the water what are the adaptations there are two adaptations the first one is they have a light spongy stem usually the stem is not so lightweight material all no it is quite heavy so that the plant even you take a, a bucket of water okay take some stem and put it inside will it float mostly it will sink no because it has some weight but these plants no um, like water hyacinth and duckweed they have a very light weight and spongy stem so that it will float when it is light it will float no that's why these plants float and also the roots hang loosely they have roots but here on the surface itself you can see the roots they hang in the water it is not fixed to the sand usually if there is a root for the plant how you, it will grow it will be fixed to the soil no in this case in the case of floating plants there are roots but the roots keep floating they are not fixed to the soil clear this is about floating plants so what are fl floating plants the plants which can float on water are called floating plants examples of floating plants are water hyacinth and duckweed and what are the two adaptations first they are they have a stem which is very lightweight and spongy in nature that's why they float and the second point is they have roots but the roots are not fixed to the soil they float in the water only so that's why the plant itself keeps floating clear yeah, this is about floating plants so the next type is a fixed plants lotus is an example of fixed plants so the roots fix to the top mud what does this mean the roots doesn't float like the floating plants in this case in fixed plants the roots are fixed to the mud under the, the i mean the bottom surface of the water the roots are fixed but only on the top surface it is not deeply rooted but however it is fixed to the mud inside the water and mostly you can find these plants in shallow water regions shallow means which is not so deep not in water bodies which is so deep only in uh, like ponds and lakes all you can find where the water is shallow and then the examples for fixed plants are as i told you already lotus and water lily is at another example for water uh, i mean fixed plants and what are the adaptations what makes them be fixed here there is a flat broad leaf which float on the surface see though the stem is fixed and the root is fixed to the mud you can always see lotus on the surface right it doesn't mean the roots and stem also float the stem and roots are fixed to the soil but the leaves float because it is specially adapted what special adaptation it is very flat in nature when compared to the other leaves the lotus leaf is flat and broad it is very big and flat and that's why it doesn't get immersed into the water but it is floating on the water so the leaves are specially adapted so that it floats on the surface and the stem is very thin long and flexible so that it reaches the soil only when the stem reaches the soil the flower and the leaves are seen outside on the surface no so this special adaptation is it has a very long though the roots are fixed down in the soil the length of the stem is a very long so that it reaches the surface of the 
water clear in the case of floating plants the stem also floats the root also floats the leaves also float so everything will be floating on the surface no in this case it is fixed but still the leaves and the flowers are all seen outside because of the very long stem and flexible stem these plants have clear and also the stomata is present on the upper surface of the leaves and the special um, adaptation here is stomata is present on the upper surface and what is the advantage of stomata being on the upper surface the gas exchange is very easy the gas exchange takes place now what exchange takes place carbon dioxide is taken in and oxygen is given out for photosynthesis right so gas exchange is a essential process in green plants so here see suppose if it is immersed inside the water how will gas exchange take place it is difficult for it to exchange the gases no so here since the upper surface of stomata that is the place through where the gas exchange takes place since it is present on the upper surface easily gas exchange also takes place so what have we studied about fixed plants the roots are fixed to the mud and usually you can find these plants in the shallow water region examples are lotus and water lily and what are the adaptations they have very flat and broad leaves and because of this they can float on the surface and also the stem is very thin long and flexible so that they can reach on the surface of the water also the stomata is found in the upper surface of fixed plants so that the gas exchange is easier clear yeah, this is about fixed plants so the last type of plants what we are going to learn in today's classes under water plants so the name itself suggests that the plant is going to be under the water in the uh, previous two cases what did we study in both the cases you can see the plants on the surface of the water no but in this case the plants are under the water if this is the water surface the plants will remain inside only under the water below the water surface only you can see the plants it doesn't come up so they are found under the surface of the water they are not on the top of the water examples given are tape grass and pond weed what are the examples tape grass and pond weed and this is the tape grass it is like a tape no like cello tape or some tape duct tape all we use no it appears like a tape but it is a grass that's why it is called as tape grass and also pond weeds so what makes them stay under the water what are the adaptations they have thin narrow leaves the leaves are very thin and narrow and what is the advantage of the leaves being thin and narrow it can uh, manage water currents it can fight against the water currents usually there are water currents and inside the water and the plants uh, need to survive among the current no so this thin tape like structure of the leaves help them to still manage under the water so this is the advantage of this plant or the special adaptation and how will they absorb the gases i told you uh, in the previous uh, case in the case of fixed plants all the leaves are present on the outside surface for the gas exchange in these plants how gas exchange takes place it takes place through water through dissolved gases gases can dissolve in water no they can dissolve in water so with those gases the plants will manage to survive they have that ability clear so this is about under water plants what have we studied about under water plants they are the plants which live under the surface of the water examples tape grass and pond weed and what are the adaptations of these under water plants they have very thin narrow leaves which can fight against the water currents and also they can um, uh, do their gas exchange by dissolved gases with the help of dissolved gases they can exchange their gases they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen and in your homework part you have to read pages 104 and 105 in your textbook learn your daily lessons only then it's going to be easy when i give you a test after completion of this chapter that is all for today's class dear children you all take care and bye bye